So this lesson is a continuation of the compound angle formulas which we learned earlier. So I would highly recommend you, if you haven't memorized the compound angle formulas in the previous lesson, then go ahead and memorize the formulas and then come back because it's much easier to understand the double angle formulas and half angle formulas if you know your compound angle formulas. Okay, so I'm gonna make the assumption that you know your compound angles. Uh, so let's go ahead and learn the double angle formulas. So if you know that sine of x plus y is equal to sine x cos y plus cos x sine y, what happens if the two angles which you're adding happen to be the same? If x equals y? Well, we replace x and y with theta, you will get sine theta cos theta plus cos theta sine theta. Wait a minute. Sine theta cos theta is the same as cos theta sine theta, which means we can simplify this into 2 sine theta cos theta. So that's how we derive the double angle formula for sine. It's basically exactly the same uh, as the addition formula for sine. It's just a special scenario. If the two angles you're adding happen to be the same angle, that's why it's called the double angle formula. You're doubling the angle. Now, if you can generate the double angle formula from the addition formula for sine, you should also be able to do the exact same thing for cosine and for tangent. So in this next example, we generated the double angle formula for cosine by using the addition formula for cosine. So you should get cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. Now be careful, because for the double angle form for cosine, there's actually three variations. Okay, so the first variation is cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. But we can generate the other two variations by using the Pythagorean theorem, oh sorry, Pythagorean identity from uh, grade 11, because we know that cos squared theta is equal to 1 minus sine squared theta. Okay, so if cos squared theta is 1 minus sine squared theta, you will get 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. And we also know that sine squared theta is 1 minus cos squared theta. So if you uh, let sine squared theta be 1 minus cos squared theta and then you simplify, you'll get what I have here, 2 cos squared theta minus 1. So you have three versions of the uh, double angle formula for cosine. In the next lesson, we're going to prove trig identities. So this will come in handy. There Sometimes one version is a little better than the other. But really, if you chose the wrong version or the yeah, the wrong version. I don't want to say the word wrong because you just have to uh, do a, a few extra steps. Okay, so double angle form for tangent, that's derived from the addition form for tangent. Uh, once again, if the two angles happen to, be, happen to be the same, then you end up being end up doubling the angle. And that's how you generate the double angle form for tangent. Okay, so now if you have the double angle formulas, you can also have the half angle formulas. So the first step is, if we have cos theta, we can rewrite that as cos of 2 times theta over 2, right? Theta over 2 times 2 is exactly the same as theta. Now why would you want to write theta as theta over 2 times 2? I mean, it seems redundant, but think about it. Cos of 2 times theta over 2. So what you have here is you're doubling theta over 2. Once again, you're doubling theta over 2, which means, I think you can see it already, we're going to use the double angle formula for cosine because it's doubling, right? You're, I know it seems weird, but you're doubling theta over 2. So we double theta over 2 and use the uh, 1 minus 2 sine squared version of the double angle form for cosine you'll get this. You'll get cos theta is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared theta of theta over 2. Now we want to isolate uh, sine of theta over 2, so you rearrange, and why do you want to isolate sine of theta over 2? Because that is your half angle formula for sine. So we're going to do the exact same thing, but instead of using the 1 minus 2 sine squared version, we are going to use the 2 cos squared theta version, 2 cos squared theta minus 1 version. Because if you use this version, you'll generate the 
half angle formula for cosine. Okay, so we've got the half angle formula for sine, we've got the half angle formula for cosine. Both are derived from the double angle formula for cosine. Okay. Now, we also have a half angle form for tangent. Now, there are lots of different ways to prove it, but what we're going to do is we're going to prove this identity because if we prove that this identity is true, then uh, we're going to prove the half angle formula very quickly. Okay, so if tan theta is equal to 1 minus cos 2 theta all over sine 2 theta, then we can conclude that tan of theta over 2, because all we're doing is just letting theta, like let's let any angle, let's call it beta instead of theta. So let beta, so let these be betas here, beta, beta, and beta. If you let beta equal theta over 2, you'll, uh, you'll get what we have here. We'll get the half angle formula for tan. So we just have to prove that this is true, then we know this must also be true. And this is the half angle formula for tangent. But we can't just assume that this is this is an identity. We're going to prove that. So I know we're going to prove identities in the next lesson, but uh, why not? Let's do it. So the right side is equal to 1 minus cos 2 theta sine 2 theta. Well, guess what? If you want to prove this identity, you need to know your double angle formulas. This is a good practice. Okay, let's do a de denominator because the denominator is a little simpler because it's sine 2 theta. We need the double angle formula for sine and there's only one version for that one. Sine 2 theta is 2 sine theta cos theta. Now, the numerator, I also want to simplify that. So which version of the double angle formula of, for cosine should I use? Cos 2 theta equals cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. Cos 2 theta equals 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. And cos, cos 2 theta also equals to 2 cos squared theta minus 1. There are three versions. Which one should I use? Well, I see 1 here, and I really don't want that 1 there. So I'm going to use the 1 minus 2 sine squared theta version. Okay. If you do the math, uh, you will get 2 sine squared theta over 2 sine theta cos theta. which is equal to, if 2 sine theta is a common factor, so you're left with sine theta over cos theta, which is tan theta, which is the left side. QED, we've proven the identity. Okay, we'll talk more about QED when uh, we do the identities in the next lesson. But we should have, we proved identities in grade 11, just they're a lot, lot simpler than the ones uh, uh, in, in advanced functions. Okay, so that's a half angle formula for tan. Uh, so I also want to mention that 1 minus cos theta over si all over sine theta is one version of the half angle formula. We can also have the other version, which is sine theta all over 1, or sine theta over 1 plus cos theta. Uh, you can prove this uh, is true on your own time. Uh, that would be a great homework question. So both are versions of the half angle formula for tangent. Okay, let's use the formulas. Find the exact value of sine of 22.5 degrees. I know we not, we're not supposed to use degrees in this course, but I just really wanted to use degrees to, to, to emphasize that this question would have been unfathomable. You would never th thought to find the exact value of sine of 22.5 degrees in grade 11. But now look at us in grade 12. This is a question we can easily handle. So hopefully you've noticed that let's use the half angle formula for sine. So sine, I'll just write down the formula just in case you forgot. Sine of theta over 2 is equal to plus minus the square root of 1 minus cos theta all over 2. Now plus minus, hmm. Should we use plus or should we use minus? Well, that all depends on where the angle is located. This angle is located in quadrant 1. So guess what? I'm going to use the positive version. 
the sine of 22.5 is positive. 1 minus cos 45 degrees all over 2. Okay. Okay, after some basic algebra, I know it's going to look a little weird, but sine of 22.5 degrees is equal to the square root of 2 minus root 2 all over 2. And one that you can check using your calculator. Make sure your uh, calculator is in degree mode. All right, cos of 2x. Uh, if sine x is equal to negative 12 or 13. So I see cos of 2x, so I'm going to use a double angle formula for cosine. Which one should I use? Well, I'm told sine x. So I'm going to use a version of the double angle formula for cosine that only requires me to know sine x. So 1 minus 2 sine squared x. And then you can do the math, 169 minus 288, negative 119 over 169. So it's really helpful to, to know your versions of the double angle formula for cosine. If you didn't know this version of the double angle form for cosine, let's say you only knew cos squared x minus sine squared x then you'd have to know what cos x is. So you have to do some extra math and solve for cos x. And cos x would be negative 5 over 13. Because of I, I can see the Pythagorean triple. It's 5, 12, 13 here. And it's negative because x is in quadrant 3. Everything is negative, sine and cos, except for tan. Okay, so without finding x, find sine 2x. Uh, cos, x is in, cos x is 4 over 5. And x is in quadrant 1. Speaking of Pythagorean triples, I see 4 over 5, so hopefully you know that sine x is equal to, I don't want to spoil it, but if cos x is 4 over 5, and x is in quadrant 1, sine x is equal to 3 over 5. If you didn't see the Pythagorean triple, then do the math. Uh, it's not that bad. Uh, basically, x squared plus y squared plus r squared. You solve for y, and y is going to be 3. 24 over 25. Angle x, an angle x lies in the second quadrant. Uh, tan x equals negative 4 over 3. Find sine 2x and cos 2x. Okay. So, sine, let's do sine 2x first. Sine 2x is equal to 2 sine x cos x. And of course, this is the 3, 4, 5 right triangle again. So sine x is going to be 4 over 5. Okay, so it's 5 because of the 3, 4, 5 right triangle. And it's positive because x is in the second quadrant. This is negative 3 over 5. So this is negative 24 over 25. Okay. What about cos 2x? Cos 2x. Let's use, you can use any version you want. I'm just seeing if there's a shortcut to do this question. But you know what? I'm content with what we have. So how about we do the 2 cos squared x version? We haven't used this version yet. So 2 cos squared x minus 1. And cos x was negative 3 over 5. So it's 9 over 25. 18 over 25 minus 1. 
negative 7 over 25. So we have cos theta equals negative 7 over 25. Theta is in quadrant 3. Find exact values of sine of theta over 2. So theta is in quadrant 3. Okay, let's write this down. Theta is in quadrant 3. So that means it's between pi and 3 pi over 2. Now why did I write that down? Because I want to know where theta over 2 is. Because remember, with theta over 2, there's two versions. There's a plus or the minus. If I don't know where theta over 2 is, I don't know if it's going to be a plus or is a minus. So if theta is between pi and 3 pi over 2, theta over 2 is between pi over 2 and 3 pi over 4. Okay, now I know exactly where theta over 2 is. Theta over 2 is located in the second quadrant between 90 and 135 degrees. So it's in the third quadrant. Oh, sorry, it's in the second quadrant. Okay, so now, you know what, I'm going to write down the formula one more time. Plus minus, uh, what was it? 1 minus cos theta all over 2. So, I'm going to use a positive root because, like I said, theta over 2 is in the second quadrant. Do the math, that's 25 plus 7. Negative 25. Four fifths, beautiful. Worked out perfectly. Okay, so this sheet uh, or this lesson is an application of the, or I would argue it's an extension of the compound angle formulas you learned earlier. Because with the compound angle formulas, you can generate the double angle formulas, and with the double angle formulas, you can generate the half angle formulas.